All right, and we're back. And now we're being joined by Ihur Poshivailo, who's of the Hanchar uh, Museum for Folk Culture, the deputy director. And they'll be having a new exhibit opening on November 28th, The Creati Creativity of Freedom, Revolution Re the Revolutionary Culture of Maidan. Sorry, I messed up a little bit. And we have some fantastic items that Ihur has been collecting for this exhibit since December already, yeah. right? Uh, we watched the video when we <laughs> have seen how easily the things can change and the Maidan looks very different than a year ago. Absolutely, uh, <clears throat> but objects are not easily collected because there are different periods. And the collection we have in our Maidan Museum, Maidan Freedom Initiative, it is quite comprehensive. So we have great objects which can cover different displays like from the protest movement history to art uh, art objects and so our exhibition is um, the continuation a kind of a project which started at the national art museum a month ago and uh, it's a kind of a um, approbation of and creation by community on a wide visitors voices base the future museum of maidan and so for everyone to know there isn't a permanent museum yet, but this exhibit and others are the first attempts at that, the, you know, kind of the prototypes to get it together and see what can be done. So you brought some things with you today. What do you have? Well, what for you are probably the most, I mean, everything is a bit symbolic, every, you know, helmet or the stone, but for you, what are the objects you really feel, you know, there is some attachment for you being there at Maidan as well? Well, uh, I appreciate and I have special feelings to objects which I collected personally and which objects which have some story behind them. Mm. And say I'm working for the Folk Art Museum and so I appraise, I appraise objects which have some artistic content. Say this, of course, uh, many people symbolize uh, Maidan with some artistic objects like these painted casks or helmets and mm. painted shields. But there are some quite unique objects like this uh, glass cup which um, shows us creativity, how people on that uh, emergency, in emergency situation, they try to do l a lot with less. And well, and so what we have, yeah, I mean, what we have here, just so everyone can see, because I was so impressed when you showed this to me recently, it's just a glass jar, and all the rest of it, the handle, everything else has been made, this is wire, this is a different material, so the kind of ingenuity people had, um, you know, on Maidan to make things that they needed, and anything that way. Yeah, and some, some also some creativity, because people, uh, people, uh, creativity, it, 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 it comes out in, in, in a special conditions when there is emergency, there is nothing to do. And like this uh, cocktail Molotovs made of electri electricity lamps, it's fantastic. Uh, oh, this is a lamp full of red pepper. Also, quite. Uh, what would they use the red it's pepper a for? It's pepper bomb. Yes. Oh, I see. <laughs> so, as people, you know, people may have seen the images. The Ukrainian protesters would clash with the riot police and the police, and they would throw Molotov cocktails like the traditional ones that the uh, yeah. <laughs> <It's like laughs> absolutely that still has the and fuse. They're almost ready to. Um, but now, you know, when you have, I remember every bit. I mean, we Ukrainians, we remember the Maidan people from Kiev, and now when you look at pictures. It's a lot, some things look like a masquerade, you know, like this helmet, it won't help, you know, I mean, it, it will help a bit, but it's a lot about the symbols. And now there is a real war going on, and when you work with these objects, you know, when there are real guns and you see the cocktail Molotovs, what are you feeling uh, in this current Ukrainian crisis? And how, what, how are you feeling uh, to the Maidan change things, you know, at this point? Well, uh, we collect objects with, with the idea that, my, that, the mil, uh, that today's military uh, campaign started with Maidan, so it's continuation mm -hmm. and the result of Maidan. So all this, a lot of people who, 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 to whom this object belongs, they are, are, are right now uh, in, on the, in the east of Ukraine. And we have some great objects from, say, so-called, guys of so-called Mikhailovska Sotnya. And um, it's, a it's a square. It's a square in Kiev, uh, where uh, after the dismantle, the, when the students uh, were beaten and there was a crackdown, the Maidan on the first uh, day after the crackdown moved to this other uh, square with a lot of churches. Yeah, and we have some special objects like uh, like making chuchulas or how to say this model Puppet? of people. 
put at night to, to take away titushkas and some barcode. Mm -hmm. And they will be right now at the exhibition. So yeah. they're quite unique because they are gifted to us by people who are right now in Ator. Mm. Also, we have a kind of a diary of, uh, of one guy who right now in, on, in the military zone. And he was at Maidan and right now he presented us another, the diary number two. Hmm. Taken from the second Eastern part. Ukraine. Yeah, the second part. So a lot of stories, a lot of ideas, and I think that these objects, it's not like masquerade for me, but behind these objects mm. are real people's lives and their ideas, their strives to freedom. Mm. And uh, that is why we, we make a, a series of exhibitions in order to find the best way to create the future museum so that the museum should not be created by the government mm. or one private initiative or a group of people, but in, in engaging the whole society. Well, and I think it's very interesting because this attempt to create a, a museum is an attempt to also cultivate the memory, to figure out what's important and what should be remembered. And I, and I do think it's interesting because what you've shown, I mean, these objects, even if the helmets wouldn't necessarily defend from a bullet, at first it wasn't about bullets, it was about bats or rubber bullets. They had function, and what's so interesting from some of the objects you've shown, but others that you have at your exhibit, is the adjusting, taking the old Ukrainian skills, painting icons, using folk skills, to, you know, you scare away the berkut, you scare away the riot police instead of, you know, the old spirits and the evil spirits and how that was adjusted. And it's interesting, what I think is so rare here is you've been, you and others have been involved contemporaneously, that you have been a part of the process while trying to collect and to a certain extent evaluate. Yeah. So have you changed some um, attitude? I mean, this brick, yeah, it's a part of the, you know, it was somewhere, uh, I mean, there were some people suffered because they were hurt. Uh, I mean, a lot of journalists were heard as well. And how do you I mean, for instance, with the cocktail Molotovs, to explain maybe for somebody that it's the first Molotov cocktails used in Ukraine ever. You know, many people have learned, maybe somewhere in Paris, you know, with all the demonstration, people knew how to make it. But that was something which more or less brought a kind of violence to the Ukrainian street. A lot of the things were used for the protection. But still for you as a person from the mu museum, as a person who used to work with something different, how you look at these things now, when the violence became more or less a usual thing for, in the country? For me personally, these objects uh, have, have some, some additional meaning. Uh, I like creativity, which people displayed producing typical uh, cocktail mm -hmm. molotov. Like, look at this. It's, it's kind of an art object itself. So very simple, but very meaningful. Even, um, even some innovation, innovation things like this, people just created this to throw the cocktail oh, so it's like it's away. Easy, easier to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that you could swing it and you could throw it farther, and that's mm -hmm. what people have the used The usual them. one you can buy I'm, in Kiev. I mean, even the minor symbolism is interesting. We have Livivska, which is a famous Western Ukrainian beer. So then in, a, in its own way, it becomes a patriotic symbol. I mean, I can, in this box, I can see all the kind of bottles you have, just everything which um, had been available. But in, in, a, in, our, in our collection, we also have purely artistic objects, mm -hmm. which, which were created during Maidan. It's like 10 meter canvas painted by over 100 people. And mm. so the canvas painted in, the, in that period, it displayed people's ideas, notions, emotions. Also, we have so-called um, Christmas uh, shopka. It's kind of a Christmas vertep installation, which also stayed all days of Maidan until the end of winter. Mm. So some objects are pure of a pure artistic value, some historical, some creativity. My, uh, the last question for me is, is about Maidan as a place, uh, which, is, which became uh, very symbolic. Um, you know, there are some photos, there is some exhibit there, and there was a discussion that Maidan had to remain the place where people gather, where they discuss, maybe it should be more to the public. In the end, it was, um, I can't tell, dismantled, but in the summer it was more or less cleaned. Uh, what do you think how the Maidan should look like? And uh, could it be something just not the regular square it is now? I think Maidan should be a special space, public space, and including everything, the memorial elements, uh, museum elements, a special space. And we warned uh, the government, by the way, the city hall, the local government, not to, uh, not to uh, destroy Maidan in uh, late July, early August, but to tra transform the camp, 
Maidan Camp City into the Museum of Maidan. It doesn't matter what kind of form it will take. It can be in temporary tents or whatever else, but the people need some place, some sacred place, to come to discuss, to see, to see the object, to rethink what had happened in that period. Which I think is so interesting because so many of these issues are still being processed by Ukrainians and people who are here. One of the terms that comes to my mind, and I'm not entirely sure it applies, but is post-traumatic stress disorder. This huge thing happened to a country and it's still responding and many people haven't even had the opportunity to react. People who were on the Maidan went to the front, whether to volunteer or bring food and are still very much caught in the moment. But I guess the question I'd like to end on, what motivates you? You, know, you invested so much work to collect these things already in December, very early, um, you know, barely more than a year ago. What made you want to do this and continues to make this important for you? Well, it it was a big challenge in that period whether you should join young guys who throw cocktails of Moldovs or do your professional job, what you can do and what you adjust to do and what you can do much better than other people. So it was my, my, my civil uh, duty to do something. So we started this initiative. We didn't only collect objects, but we also issued a kind of announce, announce, uh, announcements. We organized our programs out of our museum on Maidan. So it was a systematic activities to support people, to show that the cultural institutions are with people and that museums are with people. And so I had an article naming, uh, we, we, try, we learn to be with people. I mean, me, we, the museums, the cultural institutions, which usually depend upon the government. And mm. so they're not, uh, quite open in their opinions, in their visions, in their activities. So it was a great challenge, on the, on the other hand, to build something new, to build a museum not about the past, but a museum about the future, about the freedom, not only the, about the historical events, but about the strives of Ukrainian people to be a democratic state with mm. European values and uh, with freedom. Mm. Well, very interesting to hear all the different ways Maidan changed Ukrainian culture and a certain democratization, too. Absolutely. All right, well, that's the end of our program for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us, and please join us again next week.